All right, guys, welcome back, and let's continue from where we left off in the last episode. So, the last episode, we were able to load our config from our ENV and also create database connection and connect to our DB. So, the next thing is to start working on our API, and the first thing we want to do here is to set up the server. Then, instead of just connecting or interacting with things from the main.go file, we are going to use our server to make the interaction. And to do the activities on the API side, we are going to need Gene to be installed. And to get Gene, here is what we need to run. I'm not sure what the U is meant to do, probably to get other things we need. Yeah, I wouldn't ignore trying to look for what that means, but I'll just copy this and come back to my code and paste here. All right, so now back within uh, API, we're going to create a new file called server here, dot go. And the first and first package is API, okay? So here we're going to import gin. So we have GitHub. So we have the gin itself. Then we are supposed to have the course from gin contrib. I'm not sure if that is available or we would have to import it. So we have github.com slash gin dash contrib. Yep. Okay, that looks like it's available as well. I will find out. If it's not, then we can just use GoMod tidy to get it anyways. So the next thing we'll do here is to define the server struct. And here we can have type server. Again, we've done this before. Just a little bit of um, adjustment due to some new um, stuff we are introducing. So the server is going to have the router. And this is going to be referencing the engine engine. Also, I'm going to be having the config here, which is going to be referencing utils.config. Then we're going to be having the DB here as well, which is going to be referencing the db.database. All right, bro. So we imported this course, and again, if you reference the first backend, the Fingry backend, you see that we set up course to allow cross-site um, interaction. So we're going to be doing that now, again. So we have from my course handler and I'll speed this through this because I've done this before so gen dot handler font so we have the config cause dot default config and we are getting this information from here but apparently we've not installed it so I'm going to see how to install it later on so config dot allow origins and this is going to be allow all origins. So it means we can use any, any front end. Then next config dot allow headers. So we're going to append to the default one. So we're going to have append. Then config dot allow headers. Then we are going to add the authorization header. So for some reason we are doing this, but I'm guessing the allow headers should include authorization. We don't know, but yeah, that's just something. Then finally, we want to return cross dot new config so let's get the config package itself so grow mod tidy so we get to see where it tries to get the cross pro package and it did get it and we are good on that note so the next thing is to set up new server and we've done this before also so we have found new server so it takes in the config, or rather, instead of the config, we want to get the path. So technically, in our first um, iteration, we got the path, but I think we can load the config from main, then just set it here. The same thing with database, then we have this. Yeah, I think this works better. So here, we are not going to be doing anything specific because what we are sending to the new server here are already predefined stuff. So no error is bound to happen here. So as a result of that, we just return the reference to the server here. So here we're going to have 
server which is going to be referencing the um, server we send the router in the case of the router we're going to be using the gene default however because we want to integrate our course handler to gene we're going to define it separately so here we're going to have g into gene default then we can have g.use just like you would use in your express uh, middleware so we are going to have my course handler like that so now we can have the router as gene which is g then the config as config and db as db that will be good so we can remove this then we can return the server so if you prefer this or you prefer we return like this so any watch so we can remove this i actually prefer to return like this so now we can come back to or rather before we come back to the main we want to create a function associated with the server and that's our start function so here we can have fun so s and instead of run we're going to have start so this is going to take in the port we want to start in then it's going to be an integer then we can have an error here so within our start function we want to register a default part which is going to be like a pointer that we've actually set up things so here we're going to have s.router.get and in here we're going to have uh, just slash and this is going to be fun into cts we're going to have that and here we're going to have cts.writer.edl.set so the content type is going to be tests slash html okay then we want to return the string, so contests.string into HTTP status OK. So we're going to get that from HTTP OK. And here we're going to have welcome to FinSA API, which is looking good. Then finally, we want to run this. So s.router, we have to return it because it's going to either have an error or not. So s.router.run. So instead of doing this, I'll use the fmt spf, fmt dot spf. So this is going to be in a local host. Then the port will specify it. So yeah, if there's an issue, this is going to have an error, which is what we are returning here. So now we can come back to the main.go file. We have the config, we have the db, and now we can do new server. So api dot new server. So let's import API. Okay, it looks like API is already available. And because we are not expecting any error from API, we can just have error equals to server dot start. And if error is not new, we can panic error and we are good. So that's the setup we need for our API to set as in this. So let's run the server and see if things are working. So start or rather make start. I'm not sure we specify the port. Okay. Okay, so we specified port 8080. Is there an error? Oh, okay. We set local hosts instead of local hosts. Let's fix that. Local hosts. So that should restart things. So this time around, things are running. And if I open this port, actually, this host, come back to my browser, on paste. And now we have welcome to FinSA API, which looks good. So this is a testimony that our API setup is completed. And here we're going to round up in this episode as a pointer that we've completed the API setup. In the next episode, we're going to continue with the flow and see you in the next episode. Bye for now.